Welcome back and now looking at developments in the UK. Seven members of parliament have resigned from the Labour Party in protest at Jeremy Corbyn's approach to Brexit and anti-Semitism. One of the MPs, Luciana Berger, said Labour had become institutionally anti-Semitic and she was embarrassed and ashamed to stay. Corbyn says he's disappointed that the MPs feel unable to continue working for the policies that inspired millions at the 2017 election, as he says. Political analyst Sanusha Naidu joins us now on the line via Skype to unpack this. A very good evening to you, Ms. Naidu, and thank you so much for speaking to us. Your thoughts on this? Does it uh, mean, uh, does it point to a split in the Labour Party? Uh, good evening. I think it does raise a lot of questions about the internal dynamics of of the Labour Party. Uh, just listening to one of the members that had had decided to resign, uh, talking about anti-Semitism, but also talking about the fact that there's a lot of internal dissent and not enough room for for critical thought, for people's views to be aired, and so forth. So obviously there's challenges that have been posed against uh, the leader of the party and his willingness to accommodate different views and conflicting views and, and, and critical views around uh, particular issues. And so one of the things that became quite interesting at the briefing that one of these uh, MPs that resigned uh, suggested that they were looking for to create a new party or rather a new dynamic around politics in in the U in Britain and more importantly they were they were appealing across the board to to other uh, members in other political parties to join this new initiative that they're going to start or they're intending starting so i think this is a sense of whether or not this this plays into what is the current status quo of politics in the in britain in, in particular and more importantly i think with brexit on the horizon so 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 near uh it actually doesn't do the labor party very well mm. in terms of what they to achieve around calling for a for a referendum or calling for a new vote it also gives the conservatives more traction okay, around we'll brexit get to, we'll get to uh, we'll get to the Brexit uh, EU referendum in just a moment, but I just want to look at the Labour Party at the moment. You say uh, some of them are saying that they're going to form an independent body. They certainly have said that they're not going to um, join any other party. There are those, though, who say it's reminiscent of the SDP resignations in the 1980s. Do you think so? Well, there seems to be some correlation and some some broad dynamics that can be drawn in that respect. Um, what it did do in the 1980s is what it strengthened the hand of Margaret Thatcher and the Conservatives. So I think this in itself also creates that dynamic in terms of if you have a weakened uh, Labour Party in Parliament, and of course if you have these individuals who have resigned calling for a new initiative, uh, a new party or whatever is it that they are going to form as a result of this uh, uh, this resignation. It means then we've got to go back and look, and I'm not 100% sure on this part, but I do think you've got to go back and look and see uh, what, do they, what, have, what becomes of their membership as MPs in the parliament. In, I know, do they still stay as independent? Do they keep their membership or do they basically rescind it? And what does this mean? Also bearing in mind that there's by-elections, I think, as well. So there's a sense that this can also create other dynamics and for the Labour in terms of by-elections that will happen in the U in Britain. So I think for the for Labour, which has been very, very vocal under James, under uh, the, the leader Corbyn, and has been very critical of Theresa May's government and pushed the envelope on a lot of things with regard to her rule and the, and the way the Conservatives had played out their, 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 their leadership role. I think this does strike very at okay. the heart of, the, of Labour. Uh, I'm just looking at a statement now by Nick Bowles, uh, a Tory who himself has a rather precarious situation with his own party. He's warning Labour to be careful of these defections, but we are seeing uh, quite a number of uh, uh, defections from other parties, uh, an independent group that you spoke about earlier on. But is it enough to create the conditions for a proper centre party, as has been debated? Um, it, I'm not hundred. I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's it's it, at this point in time whether they'll have the kind of traction that we think about when we talk about a centre-focused uh, or centre-ideologically based party. So I think in that way, one of the things that was quite interesting about those seven 
defections or resignations from the Labour Party was the fact that the party is becoming too leftist. And that was quite an interesting statement made in one of the press briefings. Uh, so I think if there is traction around a centre, a centre-focused political party in the UK right now, uh, it has to gain a lot of the younger members of society to become part of that party. Uh, and of course, it also has to be one that will have to be able to see that if it if it's a, it's a party that is actually a coalition maker in terms of the various political outcomes that may result in uh, British politics, then they may have to go into any kind of coalition with, with either Labour or Conservative or any other political party that may have some kind of traction. So I think right now it's quite a difficult time even in the UK and in okay. Britain and across, across Europe. Thank you very much, Sanusha Naidu. She's a senior.